Hey everybody, this is Nick from CanWeld coming at you from our office in Vaughan, Ontario today. Today I want to talk to you guys about how to properly sharpen your tungsten, but also the importance of having a dedicated side for your aluminum and your mild steel. Most people already know that, but you should also have a dedicated side for your aluminum TIG welding rods and your aluminum mild steel and stainless steel welding rods. It's pretty easy to do. A lot of these have a little workbench on them. Uh, in some shops I worked in, we used to paint the aluminum side green because that's the tungsten that we used. We'd paint the mild steel stainless steel side red because that's the tungsten that we use for that. I don't have the little benches on this one, so what I've gone ahead and done is just labeled aluminum and mild steel, just so I keep it straight. Uh, the reason that you want to do that is if you have this one and you're going to go welding on some aluminum and I happen to come over to the wrong wheel and I start sharpening it, little bits of that steel that get caught up in here, they're going to get implanted into the soft part of this rod. And then when I start doing my TIG welding with it, those little bits are going to burn up and they're going to make impurities in my weld. So it's really important, just like with your brushes that you use, with the grinding wheels that you use, and the tungstens that you use, to have dedicated stuff for whether you're doing aluminum or mild steel. So we're going to bring the camera in a little bit closer. I'm going to show you how I like to sharpen my tungstens, and uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, so today I have my green tungsten, and what I need to do is put a point on this before I then blunt the point to get the ball on the end to do my AC welding. So to start off making the point, when I first learned how to TIG weld, a lot of us would go like this. I learned later on in life that what that ends up doing is it puts the striations or the scratches going this way on your tungsten. And then when your tungsten's down and the gas needs to flow over it, it goes over those grooves and it makes it chaotic. The best way to do it is either like this or I prefer like this. Now a lot of these have a little workbench here and I see a lot of guys, they like to rest it on the workbench and go like this. Now there has been the odd time in my life where I was rushing and I ended up butting into the wheel and then the tungsten flipped out of my hand and banged against the wall or almost hit me and I found that kind of scary. So the way I always like to do it now is I use the back of this finger and I just hold it gently and I rotate it in my fingers. This way, if it gets ripped out of my hand, it's only going to shoot it down to the floor. It's not going to come up at me and bounce around anywhere. And I can keep my fingers nice and far away from the actual wheel itself. If you do this long enough, eventually you are going to feel your tungsten slowly getting hot. But you can always wear your TIG welding gloves when you do this too. Okay, there we go. We got a nice shallow point on this. Now I'm ready to take it over and use some high amperage and turn that into a ball on the end and then begin doing my AC welding. And remember, green tungsten for AC aluminum welding. I'm using my AL wheel, AL, AL. That's where I need to be. If I was sharpening up a gray tungsten so I could do some DC welding on some mild steel, I'd be over on this side. Mild steel, mild steel. Always very important to keep those separate. Okay, now we're going to sharpen up this tungsten so we can do some mild steel and some stainless steel DC welding. Mild steel, so I know I'm in the right spot. I'm in the right spot there. I'm going to try to, usually I like to stand directly in front, but I'm going to try to keep my body away from the camera. Now something that you'll notice, if you do this often enough and long enough, you're going to develop a groove on your wheel. You don't want that groove actually, because I find that when you start to sharpen into the groove, you end up with a round point. So it is not a bad idea to just gently let it wander across the surface so you're getting an even wear. And there we go, we got a real nice point on there, that's perfect. Okay, so one last thing I wanted to mention. Um, when you're sharpening your tungsten like this, you'll end up kind of just hovering in one spot. And after you do that over and over and over and over again, you end up wearing a groove into your stone. Some people like that groove, but I find that when I try to sharpen my tungsten in that groove, it bounces around. 
and it bounces around and I don't get a really nice clean point. What I get is a more rough rounded sort of point that I don't like as much. So there's two ways you can work against that. You can slowly go back and forth while you're doing, you're still rotating in your fingers but you're also moving so that you're evenly wearing your stone. Or you can get a tool called the dressing stone which is like a little wrench with three or four gear looking wheels on it and you just hold it right against it and it'll grind your stone smooth again. I think that's the best thing to do. If you don't do that, you end up getting a wheel something like this. And you can see there is a massive groove worn into this, which I find makes it really, really hard to sharpen. And also sometimes, because these parts are getting thin, they'll break off and it shoots little bits of stone while you're working. And it's just not very safe. This is a, not a great stone to be using. I don't think anybody should be using it. This one is pretty much too far gone to be saved. But at the very least, it needs to be dressed with a dressing stone to bring it back down to being flat again before you can safely use it. So try to keep that in mind when you're doing this. If you find you're putting a big groove into your brand new wheel, start trying to move back and forth or invest in a dressing stone. Okay guys, so that pretty much sums up our video on why you need to have a dedicated aluminum and mild steel stainless steel grinding wheel. Uh, thanks a lot for watching today. I hope you guys learned something. If you have a different technique for sharpening your tungsten that you find works really well for you, please go ahead and mention it in the comments below. I'd like to read it. Uh, I'm always interested in to learn and to read what you guys are doing too. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, don't forget you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And until I see you guys next time, stay safe. Thanks for watching.